Hi, I'm Adam. Hi, I'm Alison. And today we are here at 507 Squadron in Thai Lebar Air Base. So Alison, what exactly are we here for today? We are repairing runways and I'm all dressed for it. And in the meantime, I guess I'm the only one who didn't get the memo. But anyway, I didn't know that the RSCF actually repairs our own runways. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that the RSCF does that we didn't know. So let's go find out more. Okay, let's go. So today we have with us 3rd Sergeant Paul as well as ME2 Jeremy. I understand that 507 Squadron has a few flights, so can you tell me more about it? I'm 3rd Sergeant Paul from the Airfield Damage and Recovery Flight. What our flight does is we maintain the serviceability of the runway. This includes its lightings and also the arresting systems. Hey, I'm ME2 Jeremy. I'm from Infrastructure System Recovery Flight. So for my flight, we maintain the critical system around the airbase. We also do damage recovery on services such as pipe repair, power cable repair and also comms line. We have uh, operation support flight which our guys operates the aviation support vehicles and also support the refueling operations of the aircraft. Sounds to me that 507 Squadron does a very wide variety of interesting tasks on a daily basis. So what do you guys do every day in the squadron? At the start of the day, we start with a briefing to talk about what's our tasking for the day and also disseminate some of the information and guidance from the higher management. Because the airbase is huge, our systems are scattered around the airbases, so we have to travel to several places to uh, upkeep the serviceability of our system. And uh, at the end of the day, we'll come back and uh, report on what we have accomplished for the day and also to share any lesson learned during our maintenance works. It sounds like a very challenging job. So what are some of the trainings that you have to undergo? For me, as an aviation vehicle specialist, we are being trained to repair the runway in the fastest time possible in order for our aircraft to start flying again. So because of this, we have had to undergo training, first basic theory training, and then we have to learn how to operate heavy vehicles for the use of the repair. And then we have to learn the procedure and practice out for ourselves before we were qualified. You must have encountered some sort of challenge that you had to overcome. So maybe you can share with us what was this challenge and how exactly did you guys overcome it? For damage repair, we are required to repair utility lines underground such as our fuel and water pipe, power cables and comms line. We are also required to work in trench and also don off protective gears which really restrict our movement. But during our training, we are trained to adapt to the environment and also able to overcome whatever that we encountered during the repair phase. So it sounds to me that you guys do a lot of important and meaningful work here at 507 Squadron. Yes, that's true. Uh, the ACE community in RSCF provide the basic necessity for our daily operations and we maintain the platforms of the runway and also the critical infrastructure and that keeps the airbase going and ensure that daily operation will not be disrupted. So I heard that you have prepared some potholes for Adam and I to repair? Yes, that's over at the training area. So can we take the tractor there? No, we have to walk there. So let's start walking now. Okay, so here we are at the training area and what you see in the middle of us is an example of a pothole. Well, this looks smaller than I imagined. I think it should be simple enough to repair. But I think whether it's really simple or not, right? To figure that out, we need to try it out for ourselves. So why not let's make this a bit more interesting and let's make it a challenge to see who can do it nicer and faster. Ons! Okay, but actually, right, I don't really know how to do it. So I think we need some help. So can we have some help, please? Okay, hi guys. So here we have Corporal Ruben and Corporal First Class Ren Ho. In order to make this challenge more interesting, we should also have a judge. So let's welcome Third Sergeant Sui Kian. Yeah, so you'll be a judge for us today to assess who did a better job and is faster at it. Okay? Okay, I'm ready to prepare some potholes, so let's go. Come, we take the nearer one. Okay, so when we first arrive at the pothole, right, usually it's not so well cut. It'll be a bit rougher mm -hmm. and the edges won't be straight down. So what we need to do is clear the area of debris or FOD and after that we make the sides straight down so that the okay. asphalt can bond to the okay. surface easier. Okay. okay so for this pothole this side could be more angled down okay so we angle it so that the chisel can have a better grip in. why is it so heavy ah? this was part of the older tools uh, that we used to use but recently, we managed to procure uh, automatic tools to make the job faster and easier. Then why you give me this one? <laughs> Ready? Is this correct? Okay, so right now, uh, there's this bag of stuff here. I don't know what stuff it is, but we're going to use it to fill this porthole. So what exactly is in this bag? Uh, it's coal asphalt. Okay. We used to uh, fix the portholes on asphalt ground. Yeah. So to do it, I just have to pour it in? Uh, and form a mountain bag. A mountain of it. Yeah, then when you ram it down, mm. it'll be flat. Do I have to add like any like any other substance to bond it? Just water oh. when you're ramming it. That sounds very convenient. Okay, let's try it. First of all, you'll realize that this bag is pretty heavy. Yes. Oh, 
sorry, I dropped the bag. <laughs> so actually, I'm just filling up the pothole to the dashboard. Yeah, it looks like the Oreo you put in your Mac Flurry. Bruh. Okay, <laughs> let's put it in the Okay. This is not how you do it. So this is me cleaning up my mess. Because uh, normally when they pour it, they pour it in a more controlled area. But not me. Right now, there's this device next to me. Uh, what's this actually? It's an S-Port compactor. S-Port compactor. So you just ram it onto the... So this is a manual way of flattening the S-Port. Okay, so first you have to add some water. Yep. Okay, so I just whack the thing. Uh. Yes. I just whack the thing. Just whack it as hard as, as, hard as I can. Okay. I'm oh, scared I hit myself. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the power of Ashport is gradually flattening. This is the automatic way of flattening the thing. We change the tool at the front so that it can flatten the Ashport. So does it look okay now? Uh, yes, it looks okay. Looks okay. Do I need to use the machine? Uh, no, it looks pretty flat, so it should be fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So why why do you guys have to tidy up this uh, loose bits of? So that there's no FODs on the army, so that everything can take off safely. So right now we successfully repaired the pothole, and I guess we are done. Yep. So we have come to the end of our pothole repair. So Sikian, who do you think did a better job? Hands down, this team is the winner. But why do you think we won though? Because ultimately, you all managed to repair the pothole using manual method much faster than they did. So I see you guys have a lot of like patches on your uniforms, right? But do you by any chance have a commemorative patch for the winner to bring home? I have a mosquito repair patch. Oh, okay lor. Thank you. So we have come to the end of today's episode. I hope you have learned a little bit about 507 Squadron. Personally, from my experience today, I find that what I do today together with all my instructors is something that is really tough and physically demanding and it really requires a lot of strength. So I feel that what they do is also very meaningful and very important to the wider mission of the RSAF. Yeah, I agree with everything that Alison said and uh, on top of that all, as you guys could see from what uh, we were experiencing just now, right, it is not a simple task to mend a pothole even though it's so small. Uh, it actually takes a lot of effort and it takes quite a bit of stamina. By the time I was done halfway through, I was actually out of breath. So I really feel that it's very impressive that the guys in 507 can keep this up whenever they are needed to. And that's why you can see they're also fit. Everyone in the RSAF uh, from any of our squadrons, from any vocation, all play a very important role in sustaining the RSAF's overall operations on a daily basis. So kudos to them for all their hard work and efforts today. Thanks for watching today's episode. See you next time. Bye! Bye.